Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and this tutorial is part of a Learn Node tutorial series for beginners. I'll give a link to the full playlist in the description below. Today we're going to look at the file system Common Core module for Node.js. It allows us to create, read, update, and delete files, and work with directories on the server. And that's because Node.js is a JavaScript runtime that actually runs on the server instead of in the browser. Now I'm going to click docs at nodejs.org because nodejs.org is the source of truth for information about Node, much like MDN would be the source of truth for information about vanilla JavaScript, as well as HTML and CSS. Currently, the stable version that I have installed is 14.17.5. As you view this tutorial, the versions that are stable may change. So go ahead and click on whichever version you have. And now you can see we have Node.js documentation. Today we're looking at the file system module, so I can click that right here. And there are many things you can do with the file system, with directories and different files. So amongst all of those things, what I usually do is press Control F, I'm on Windows, and then I type what I'm looking for. And we're going to start out by reading files. So when I type read file, I can see the fs.read file, and it shows the structure here for what I want to call and then you can click it and get details about that. I just wanted to show you how to find the different documentation on Node.js. And now let's get started in Visual Studio Code as we work with the FS, the File System Common Core Module. I've got Visual Studio Code open with an empty index.js file. I've also got a files directory here in the file tree and you can see a couple of starter text files, a lorem text file that has a lot of text in it and a starter text file that just says, hi, my name is Dave. We're going to start by importing the FS Common Core module here, and we use CommonJS imports for that, and so it's just require FS. After that, let's go ahead and read that starter file. So we need to specify the file, and it's in files, and then it's at starter.text. From there, we have a callback function that has an error and data that we read. And so we'll say if error, we need to throw the error. And otherwise, let's log the data to the console. Now, if you remember, the console in Node.js is in the terminal. So I'm going to press Control and Backtick to open a terminal window. You could also do that from the terminal menu. Now here to run our little Node file, in index, we just type node and then index. We don't need the JS. And let's go ahead and take a look at this data from starter. And notice after we read the data, it's presented as buffer data. So that's what we get right here. If we want to be able to read the data, we can put a two string method afterwards. I'll save and I'll go ahead and call this again. And now we can see, hi, my name is Dave in the console. But instead of to string, we can also put in a parameter here that says the encoding or defines the encoding. So we'll say UTF-8 before the callback as a parameter. And now let's go ahead and run it again, node index in the terminal. And once again, we get, hi, my name is Dave. Now notice the throw error here. According to the node documentation, if we get an uncaught exception, we need to go ahead and catch that. And I'm just going to paste this in. If we have an uncaught error, we should exit. So we listen for this uncaught exception using process. Now process is one of those values that Node has available to us. We don't need to import it, it's already there. So we're listening for an uncaught exception. Then we pass in the error to the callback here. And we're just logging the console error there was an uncaught error and then we put the error there and then we exit the application and this is direct from the node documentation so let's go ahead and throw an error on purpose I'll just look for a file to read that doesn't exist named hello and once again we'll call node index and you can see we get an uncaught error and here it is there is no such file or directory now let's change this back to starter so we can keep reading the data that exists. And I'm going to put a console log statement underneath. And this is to demonstrate that 
read file and node in general, the functions or methods you'll find from node will be asynchronous. And so we're logging the data here, but we're also logging hello here. And node has the ability to say, I'm going to process this, but let's go ahead and tackle the rest of the tasks in the program. And when I finish reading the file, I'll get that data to you. If you're familiar with async await, this should be a familiar concept. But let's go ahead and save this and let's see which we get in the console first, hello or the data. And we get hello and then we get hi, my name is Dave. So Node said it would read the file, but it went ahead and processed this console log statement and it actually was logged to the console first. And then when Node completed reading the file, it logged the data to the console. Instead of hard coding the path like we see here in read file, there is a better way and let's pull in the path module to do that. So we have path and then we use require and we're requiring path. And the reason is, is the slashes sometimes, if you're familiar with different operating systems, are sometimes backwards, sometimes forward. There can be some problems, not always, but there can be when you hard code file paths like that. But if we use the path module, we can eliminate this problem. So let's use path.join. I typed JSON, there we go, join. And then we need to specify first the directory name, and that's two underscores first. And remember, that's a value that's always available to us in Node. After the directory name, we'll say the files directory to attach on to concatenate to that directory name. And then we need to say, the actual name of the file itself. So now we've got starter text. So if we supply this, instead of hard coding a file name, it's a much better approach. Let's go ahead and save and run this one more time. And everything still works as it did. And now that we know how to read files and catch an error, let's go ahead and copy the read file. And underneath this console log statement, I'll paste this in and we will write a file but it's just a little different. I can change just a little bit of the copy and paste. So instead of read file, we've got write file. And this path here will change the file name because we're going to write a new file. This will be reply.txt. Now we don't have to specify the UTF-8. That is by default now. We will have a callback and the callback will only have an error. We're not reading data, we're writing it. So if we have an error, we'll throw the error in here. Instead of data, we can just say operation complete or more specifically, let's say write complete. And we can save this. And now let's go ahead and run this code. And we got an error. Oh, and that's because I forgot to specify exactly what we're writing to the file. I'll just say, nice to meet you. And then we have our callback, had things out of order. So again, path name, content we're going to put in the file, and then the callback. With that saved, let's run it. And there we go. We've got hello, hi, my name is Dave, and then the write is complete. Let's look at the reply file we created, and it says nice to meet you. I'm going to copy all of this write file operation down one, and then we can change it to append file, which is updating a file, adding more content to it. We'll go ahead and create a different file here. And that is to show you that append file, we'll go ahead and create a file as well if it doesn't exist. So let's just call this test. And we'll say testing text or something like that here. And other than that, it is basically the same syntax as write. We'll save this and go ahead and run the code again. And we got write complete and append complete. And then notice due to the asynchronous fashion of Node.js, the read completed last this time. And we have, hi, my name is Dave, after the other operations completed. In the file tree, we now have our test file as well. And it has the testing text in it. So append file, Worth noting that it will modify an existing file and can append content to it, but will also, it will create a file if it doesn't exist. 
So due to the asynchronous nature of Node.js and these different methods we're calling here from read file, write file, and append file, if we wanted to modify the file that we created, such as reply, it would be better to put append file, I'm going to cut this, and put it inside of the callback of the write file operation. That way it would definitely create the file and then we would be ready to append to it instead of wondering if we would possibly create the file first with append and then write over it with write file. So here let's change this to reply.txt and it says nice to meet you. Let's give a couple of line breaks and then say yes it is. And if we save that I'll go ahead and delete the test that we're no longer using and our reply because we will create it once again. So we've got reply and then we will modify reply with append and it's inside of the callback of write file. Call node index in the terminal. Hello, write complete. And then we got the read operation completed and then the append completed. So if we look at reply now, it says nice to meet you, and yes it is, in the order we expected. Now as you might imagine, if we wanted to do something to this file after we added more content, and we wanted to make sure it happened in the order it needed to, such as renaming the file, then that would need to be in the callback of the append file. I'm going to go ahead and copy append file, and then inside of the callback I'm going to paste it, and change this append here to rename. So we can rename the file and we're grabbing the reply file and then we're going to replace this parameter with what we're going to name it and we'll just call this new reply and then of course it has a callback with an error as well and then we can put rename complete. Now let's go ahead and call all of this in the terminal with node index. And it does happen in the order we expect. We got write, append, and rename. And you can see this time the read operation completed before the others. Once again, asynchronous. So we don't know which will happen before the next. But in this way we're controlling it because we're putting the append inside the callback of the write. And we're putting the rename inside the callback of the append. Let's go ahead and look at our new reply, and it does have the content we expected. Now, if you've worked with JavaScript for a while, at this point you would be saying, yes, this is nice, Dave, but this is starting to look like what is called callback hell. And yes, it is, because we're putting one inside the next, inside the next, and they're all inside the callbacks of the other. So we are controlling the flow, but at the same time, we're able to avoid this in vanilla JavaScript using async await. And now we can look at how to avoid it in Node by doing the same. I'm going to comment all of this code out. And up here we can get rid of the console log hello as well. And then at the top where we have fs, we'll switch this to fs promises and let's attach dot promises to our import here. So we are now importing the file system promises instead of just fs. And now I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it file ops for file operations. And this will be an async function. And then inside this function we can use try catch so here we'll have our catch for any errors. And now inside here I'll just say console.error and pass in the error. Or we could throw the error, but that's actually what's happening here. And we're catching them, so it will not be an uncaught error. And then inside the try block, I'm going to define data and set that equal to fs, or sorry, before that, await fs promises dot read file and now we need to specify our file path and that's what we have here 
part of why I saved that so I can just copy it up. And I'm going to hide the file tree momentarily so we can see a little more. After that, we can still specify UTF-8. And then we don't need the callback here that has the error and the data because we're using a wait and we're catching the error down here. So this should be just fine now. Now once we have the data, let's go ahead and log the data once again. And I didn't remember my semicolon after that, being a little inconsistent. Okay, so we have file ops. I'll delete the read file operation. And now here, we're just going to call file ops into action. We'll have node index in the terminal. Oh, and I didn't save the file yet. There, I'll save the file. Hopefully we don't have unexpected results now. And node index in the terminal. And we got, hi, my name is Dave, the data that we expected to get. Let's add another await in this process of file operations. We'll say await fs promises. And now we will write a file. And this file is going to be promise write. So we'll have the same type of path once again, which I can just copy and paste. But we'll just call this promise write. And after that, we want to pass in the data that we just read. And now I'm going to copy down once again. And after we write a file, let's go ahead and append to the file. And now in the append area, we'll just say, nice to meet you. Oh, let's put a couple of line breaks here with backslash lowercase n, so two line breaks. And one more copy down. And now let's rename. And we're renaming promise right, so we'll just copy this once again. And instead of content now, we need to put the new name of the file, and this will be promise complete. And we can save that. So you can see we're taking the data from the starter. Then we're writing a new file called promise write. Then we're appending to the file. And then we are renaming the file. And finally, let's go ahead and copy these two lines once again and put them right here. And now we'll call this new data. And here we want to read the new file, which is promise complete. And then we'll go ahead and log that data as well. So you can see there's several different operations happening here. We are reading data from a file, then we're writing it to a new file, then we're appending to that new file, then we're renaming that new file, then we're reading the new file and logging the data from that file. So I hope that's not confusing. I just wanted to show all the operations that we have gone over and then use them in an async await fashion. So here is node index. And here was the original content. Hi, my name is Dave. But then the new file has hi, my name is Dave and nice to meet you. And let's go ahead and look at the file tree. There it is. And we've got promise complete right here that has, hi, my name is Dave, nice to meet you. Let's go back to the index and let's add one more thing right here. I'm just going to copy this one line and above it, I'll paste in again. And here, instead of write file, I'm going to say unlink. And after that, we don't even need to pass in data because unlink is actually a delete. So we can delete this original file that is called starter text. There it is. And now that we have it being deleted, and I can get rid of the space here as well. So we're reading the file, logging the data to the console, and then deleting that file, then creating the new file. And we can even get rid of promise complete here again. And we'll get rid of new reply. We're not using that anymore. And let's make sure we save the index and we'll call it into action. Once again, we got the same in the console and we have promise complete over here, but no more starter text. It's gone because we deleted it with the unlink right here. 
And this is also available without FS promises as the first examples I showed that were just FS and then read file, write file, and so on. Unlink is what you would use to delete a file. Okay, now I'm going to create a new file over here and I'm just going to call this stream.js. Now, if we have larger files, sometimes it is good to not grab all of the data at once. It could be too much, just like moving a large pile of sand bucket by bucket or moving all the water in a swimming pool bucket by bucket rather than attempting to grab everything all at once. So this could be more efficient and a little bit easier on the application if we do this. So let's say const fs and once again let's require fs, not fs promises, just fs. And here I'm going to define rs and we're going to set this equal to fs dot create read stream. From here, I'm going to specify our files slash lorem.txt. Once again, you could use the path module would probably be a better option. I'm just doing this quickly, so I'm hard coding that in. And now putting in the encoding, and this is UTF-8 once again. So we've created a readable stream, and we've specified the encoding in the options. Now let's go ahead and specify a writable stream. And this is going to be ws.createWriteStream. And now what do we want to write this to would be the question. So let's call this from stream. Ah, let's call it new-lorem because it is our lorem text still. That works. So we have new lorem. And really, we don't need to specify anything else here. We already specified what was being read is UTF-8, so we're good there. And I did make a mistake here. I needed to make this FS, not WS, because this is getting this from the FS module, the create-write stream. And that's why it didn't help me out when I was typing it. Okay, so once we have that, we need to listen for the data coming in from the stream. So here is our readable stream, and we can say on now we're listening for the data that's coming in. And here, let's say this is a chunk of data or a data chunk, if you will. And inside of here, we could console log the chunk or we could just write to our writable stream and pass in that data chunk. So let's do that. And I will save. And now let's go ahead and run this. So we'll type node stream and notice now we have new lorem as well and this will be a large file of lorem probably about a thousand lines yes so it did it very rapidly but once again a example of a large file just a test example we could have much larger files but in that case when you're working with a large file this is much more efficient now speaking of efficiency i'll go ahead and comment this out there is even a better way to do this. Instead of the listener, just take the readable stream and use pipe. And then you can pass to the writable stream. This will accomplish the same thing. And piping is more efficient than this structure with the listener here. I'm going to save this. I'm going to delete the new lorem file. And now let's go ahead and run our stream once again by typing node stream in the terminal. And you can see we once again got our new lorem text file and it has all 1000 lines of lorem ipsum text. Okay, I'm going to create one more new file in the file tree and call this dir.js, which is short for directory. Once again, let's go ahead and define fs at the top and require it. And after we do that, what I want to do is create a directory with fs.mkdir, which stands for make directory. And we'll have, let's just call it new. We're specifying what we want to call it right here. And then there's a callback that has an error. And this is the same as we've seen previously. So if error, we could throw error. Now I won't go ahead and copy and paste the uncaught error handling code in here that I showed you earlier just to save time, but you could use it in the same way. So if we have an error, throw an error, and if not, we've created the new directory. So we'll just log 
uh, directory created. And we can save this. Let's go ahead and run our code. So here we'll type node dir, which is our new file, dir. And directory is created. And now we can see here is our new directory. Now earlier in the tutorial, we threw an error on purpose because we attempted to read a file that did not exist. Well, we can check to see if files and directories exist or not so we don't get those errors. And we also might want to check in this regard to say if the folder, if the directory already exists, let's not create it because we don't want to write over what we already have. So we can use the exists sync method. And let's start out with if, and then we'll say if it does not, and not would be the exclamation mark, fs.exists, is it exists? Yeah, two s's, exists sync. And then we'll say the same folder slash or the same directory dot slash new. So if it does not exist, then go ahead and do what's inside of the if statement. And we'll put that right there. Let's go ahead and close that out and close this out and save. And now let's see if we create the directory when we run it in the terminal. And no, no directory was created because it exists. So this says, if it does not exist, create it. So let's go ahead and delete the directory. And now let's run this once again. And now it created the directory again because it did not exist. You might find checking for file existence fairly useful before you attempt to delete a file if it exists or not, or before you attempt to even rename a file or copy a file, several things that you want to make sure the file exists. Likewise, you can check directories in this regard. Now let's go ahead and write some code that deletes the new directory. Okay, let's copy this down, highlight everything, and bring it down here to line 10. And now let's check to say if it does exist, and this is the folder, we're going to remove the directory, and that is rmdir for remove directory. So this would be a zero sum game here. If it does not exist, create it. And if it does exist, remove it. So now let's say directory removed, and we'll be able to tell by the console, but in the file tree, we should not have a directory when these operations are complete. And the directory was removed. It already existed, so it wasn't created, but it was removed. Let's go ahead and run it again. And now it was created and removed. And so it's still not in our file tree, but we can see both operations completed. Hey, thank you so much for giving this video a like if it helped you get started with Node.js. Also, thank you for watching and subscribing because you're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.